Hi, welcome to Kabbalah and Chassidus Explained number 40, Meditations and Prayer number 15. So, uh, last class we began talking about uh, how prayer is the time when we develop our love to Hashem. And um, we're going to continue talking about this at this, uh, this class. <clears throat> And we said that there's a general question, how could God Almighty command us in the Torah to feel a certain way, to love God Almighty? Right? You could tell me to do something or not to do something. You could tell me to say something or not to say something. You could tell me even to think something, because a person has control over what he thinks. A person could change his thoughts. But how could a person change his feelings? So, we're going to discuss this in this class. So, this is a very big topic in Hasidus Chabad. Chabad is Chochma Bin Adas, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And um, that's, the, the, the kind, that's what Chabad is about. So, um, intellect is a major part of Chabad's teachings and part of the teachings in the intellect is how to connect the intellect with the heart because really the intellect and the emotions are almost like two opposites right something intellectual something I study something I learn could be theoretical could be something that's nice to know about but has nothing to do with me it does not affect me Emotions is becomes personal. Emotions I feel. I'm passionate. I love, etc. So it's much, much different. Now the question is how for a person to change his emotions. A person to change his intellect, you study, you read, you learn, you learn new things. But how can a person change his emotions? So the answer is that the the brain, the mind, can have an effect on the heart and the emotions. As we know simply in, in life, when you find out about something, about something good, something good for you, and you think about it, and you read about it, and you, you develop an emotion to get it, to get closer to it, right? The more you know about something good, the more you want to get close to it. So, intellect, la, intellect has an effect on the emotion. And therefore, we find in various Jewish sources that um, one is supposed to think about those things that bring a love to Hashem. For instance, starts from the Ramah, starts, whatever, it's, it's, uh, really starts from Rambam earlier, but so we'll, we'll start from the Ramah. Ramah, the Rabbi Moshe Israelish. Which, which wrote a commentary on, uh, on the Shulchan Aruch and is uh, very, in the, in the Ashkenazic circles, um, his rulings are very, very uh, accepted. So, well, we'll get to the Sephardim soon. <laughs> okay, that's a joke. But um, there are more rights that before prayer, a person supposed to, the Mar writes this in, in uh, Erechaim chapter 98, and a person supposed to before prayer think about, before prayer a person is supposed to think about the greatness of Hashem, of God Almighty, and the smallness of man. Yeah, King David wrote, Know the God of your, of your father, and serve him with all your heart. How could you serve him with all your heart? How could you worship Hashem with your heart, with your feelings? It's through da, it's through knowledge. And now, as I mentioned, uh, you know, a little humorously, but the, the Sephardim also covered. Why? Because the great, one of the greatest sages of all time, the Rambam, Rabbeinu Meishab and Maimon, was a Sephardi. And he writes in quite a, towards the beginning of his momental work, Yad HaZokeh, 
he writes in the laws of the foundations of Torah. He says that Torah in the beginning of the second chapter. He writes like this: How can a person come to love and fear God Almighty? But here we're talking about love. When a person will meditate, I'm translating pretty much word for word. When a person will meditate in Hashem, in the creation of the Creator, His amazing creations, and he will see from them His wisdom, immediately he will love and praise and have this powerful desire to know this great, uh, His great name. Meaning the great, this amazing existence of God Almighty. Also on the end of Hilchus Tshuva, the Rambam writes that a person loves Hashem only with the knowledge that he knows Him. According to the knowledge, that's the way the, the love is. If there's a little knowledge, there's a little love, a lot of knowledge, a lot of love. Therefore, a person supposed to set aside time to think and meditate in the wisdoms that bring him knowledge of his of his creator, according to the person's ability. And this is a, and this is a unquoted Rambam, and this is. Uh, a very important theme in Chassidus, in general, Chassidus Chabad in particular. Um, as explained in Tanya and many other places. It's making some noise over here. Oh, I think it's a little better. Okay. Excuse me. So, actually, in. in um, in, 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 in terms of of, uh, in, in, of, uh, uh, of the inner dimension of Torah, the the and even in, in Kabbalah, the Chachma is the father, the Bin is the mother. They're called Abba Ve'ema, father and mother. The wisdom and understand of wisdom is the father. The understanding is the mother, and the emotions are the children. Why? Because the intellect, quote unquote, give birth, so to speak, to the emotions. And this is why, according to Chassidus, why there is so much praise every morning. There, are, there is so much of praise to God Almighty. Leading up to the Shema. We start with Haidu. About different things, about uh, the Hashem's goodness to us, and then how Hashem created the world only with, with, with speech, which we spoke about. I, I'm almost sure we spoke about it in the past in the in the classes. I'm almost sure. Baruch Sha'amar. Then there is an Ashrei. Then there's all, all the, in the Halalukas, how Hashem created all these uh, billions and trillions of, of of creatures and stars and all that. We spoke about this at length in the past, and Hashem gives life to every creature. And eventually, we're going to talk about uh, further how the angels praise Hashem. It's all about praising Hashem. The truth is, it's for it's uh, according to Chassidus. One of the reasons why we do this is for us. Chassidus, pretty much, that's the way it's explained. That this is the way. This is the reason why it's done because it's for us to have. A lot of material to be able to meditate and think about and get excited about and getting passionate about Hashem's greatness and goodness and kindness to us at every moment. And thus, awaken our love to God Almighty. And that's all many of these classes. This is what? This is the 15th class already of meditations and prayer. And, and the, all this is about what? It's about understanding the greatness of Hashem. A lot of it is about understanding the greatness of Hashem, the kindness of God Almighty, the grace of God Almighty to us, and His compassion, uh, and His giving to us, so that we should in turn develop a love to Him. So we spoke in the past that last few classes that um, and, and it's taken from um, sages, the early sages and the Talmud 
I believe it's the right at the beginning of Tainus, and then and then Rambam at the beginning of his Tefillah, uh, according to my memory. That um, the Gemara says, "Ezo he aveda shebelevs with Tefillah." What is the service of the heart? That's prayer. We had a whole class on this. That, that prayer is the service of the heart. That's what prayer is. Without heart, there's no prayer really. There's no essence of prayer. Prayer means putting your heart into it. We spoke about that great length before. And, and, and at last class, I believe we spoke about what means the heart that we have to develop in our heart a love to God Almighty like we're talking now. And we spoke last week also a little bit. Uh, quite a bit. So we're just expanding now how this works with the intellect and the emotions. So... The truth is that true that prayer is the service of the heart. That's the way our sages dub prayer. That's the way they, they describe prayer, Aveda Shabalev, the service of the heart. But really, to get our heart to be excited and, and, and passionate and yearning and loving to God Almighty, we need to engage the mind. That's a prerequisite. Because remember we quoted before from Rambam, you love Hashem only according to the knowledge that you know Him. So that's the way to get to your heart, to get to, to, to develop the love of God Almighty in your heart is through the mind. And there's a, a, a uh, uh, one of the great Hasidim of the Alter Rebbe, the founder of, Chas, of, of, uh, of Chabad, the Balatanya, Rabbi Isaac Homler, he writes in his book, Shnei Meiris, he said, I heard directly, face to face from the Alter Rebbe, quote, this is what I received from Harav Magad Mizrich, which was the Alter Rebbe's Rebbe. And that's the way he received from Val Shemtev, which was his Rebbe. The, the Magaz Rebbe was the Balshamtiv. So, what did Rabbi Isaac Homel hear from the Alter Rebbe that received from the Magad of Mizrich, that received from the Balshamtiv? That the mitzvah, the commandment of loving Hashem, as we said before, how do you command a person to feel a certain way? So, what is the commandment? The commandment is to think about and put your mind to. And he said in Yiddish, you should involve yourself in those concepts that awaken the love to God Almighty. There's one more point, and that is that the knowledge that we have about the greatness of God Almighty is not enough. The knowledge is, we're gonna, we started actually to explain this many classes ago, probably 16 classes ago, I would assume. And then from there we went into prayer. But in very short, Chochmah is the, the seed of, of, of a new idea. Let's say when you, when you try to figure something out and you finally, you're working on it for a long time, whatever, whatever topic, and finally you get it. That snap, that finger snap, that, that point of knowledge Sometimes it's called the lightning. That lightning of, of intellect, that, that's one point, that's called Chachma. And then you develop it in all its details in a Bina. And you have a whole essay, a whole, you know, details, questions, answers, whatever it is. A whole description of what you, you understood here. It takes time, you develop it. And then you could, you could explain it to someone, you could write it, you could uh, d relate it to others, etc. But that is still Chachma Bina. That's missing Das. What is Das? Eventually, my plan is to explain it at great length. But in short, Das is taking the knowledge that you know well. You know this concept very well. You studied it. You repeated it. You reviewed. You reviewed. You know it very well. You understand it clearly. Clearly. But you're missing Das at all. Completely. What's Das? Das is to bridge that knowledge to your heart, to your emotions. Das is meditation. And let me read over here from a quote over here. He quotes from the second, 
I'm sorry, the 42nd chapter of Tanya. So really in the end of the third chapter of Tanya also talks about Das, and the 42nd chapter of Tanya as well. So here's from the 42nd, of chapter, uh, 42nd chapter of Tanya. The main concept of Das is not just the knowledge, to know the greatness of God Almighty from other teachers or holy books. But the main element of Das is to deepen your mind in the greatness of Hashem, of God Almighty. And to fasten your thought, your concentration in God Almighty with strength and power of the heart and, and mind. Until your mind, your thought will be connected, will be bonded with God Almighty with a, with, a, with a strong bond, as if it's bonded with something that you see with your eyes of flesh. You imagine? God Almighty is something we never saw. We just understand. We spoke about this at length three years ago in the classes, approximately. Um, the first few classes we discussed this. But if you meditate on all these things we spoke about in the last 15 classes, it, it, one important, the first step is to know, to understand it well. And th but that's not enough. That's only... That's the, that, that is a, a, a step one. Step two is to think about it, to meditate upon it, to pretty much close your eyes. And sometimes if there's noise, your ears. And try to stop thinking about everything else. And try to focus and meditate upon this. Let's say a, sim a simple thing, which is really amazing. It's not so simple. God Almighty gives life and existence to every creature, to billions and trillions of creatures, every moment. It's life and it's existence, including me, my spouse, my children, my grandchild, yeah? So, my very life, we spoke about this in the past, my very life, come back, we have a class called uh, our, our Very Life, a few classes ago, Our Very Life. Right? So it's good. Yeah, of course I know it. Of course I know it. I know it. I understand it. I can prove it to you. We had that many classes ago, about three, three years ago. The proof of existence of God Almighty. I can prove it to you. But if I don't think about it, if I don't spend time to meditate about it and think about it, what does it mean? What it means is that my very life comes from God Almighty every moment, every second. It's an amazing thing. How much am I supposed to love God for that? God Almighty. Right? So when you meditate about it, you think about it, and you focus upon it, you, uh, then that brings emotions. And let me just finish off a very important thing. Eventually we'll probably discuss this much further, much later. But just a very important thing, one of the keys to happiness, okay? Happiness. Everybody's struggling today with that. A lot of people struggling with happiness. Yeah, I have a million dollars, I have a billion dollars, and I'm still miserable. A lot of people. People have whatever they need. Whatever they need. Nothing to compare to how people lived 100, 200 years ago. Nothing to compare. Ultimate comfort. But people are not happy. Anyway, that's a whole other uh, uh, topic. But just one point over there. There is an amazing letter from the Rebbe, from the Lubavitcher Rebbe, our Rebbe, to someone, if I remember correctly, he was complaining something, he was complaining that things are bad and this. I don't remember what it was, but probably. Anyway, the letter goes like this. The Rebbe says, <coughs> excuse me, the Rebbe writes that, you know, Adam, the first human being, was in Gan Eden, was in, was in, in, in it's, called, it's called heaven, but in the Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden, it was, it was actually on planet Earth. But he was in the Garden of Eden, on Bil Vray, in say in Russian. In other words, the ultimate bliss on Earth, the Garden of Eden. What, 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 what else? Could, I mean, what better could it be? And then what happens? He eats from the tree of knowledge. God Almighty tells him not to, and he does. 
God, I, I, I might ask him, what did you do? He said, oh, the woman that you gave me, she convinced me to eat from the tree of knowledge. God Almighty sees that he's alone. He's all alone in the world. There's no other human being. He doesn't have a mate. He doesn't have a companion. So God Almighty gives him a wife. What does he find to do to respond to God Almighty's gift for him? And in the bliss of the Garden of Eden, he complains. He complains. In the Garden of Eden, in the ultimate bliss, he found what to complain about. And then the Rebbe writes, you have Jews that were living in literal, it doesn't say they use these words, I'm using these words, in hell, hell on earth, the Holocaust, concentration camps, Auschwitz, other, other camps. Literal hell on earth. And many of them would get up in the morning and they would recite the morning blessings. Blessed are you, God, our, uh, Hashem, our God, King of the universe, for helping uh, that, that I should see, that I could stand. In the midst of real sheer hell on earth, they found what to be grateful about. So the Rebbe continues writing that all of us, all the rest of us, are somewhere in between the bliss of Garden of Eden and this terrible, unfortunate uh, situation of the, of the Holocaust, the concentration camps, how you see it should never ever happen again, God forbid. Um, never again. Uh, between that. So we are somewhere in between these two uh, situations. You know, we all have we all have good parts in our life, things that make us happy, and things that make us upset, things that make us sad. We all have that. No one has a perfect life. There's no such a thing. No living person has a perfect, perfect life. The question is what we focus on. Where we put our das. What do we meditate? What do we think about? So, and we have control to decide what we should think about. And if a bad thought comes up to us that, that pulls us down, we could change it like that and think about a positive thing. Think about uh, something that makes us happy. Think, think about those, the blessings in our life. So das is very important. Focus, meditation, what we think about, what we spend time thinking about, that is, that, that is where our emotions go. So... Well, the message is understood. A major key to happiness. Thank you for listening, and all the best.